I'm so excited that we're addressing this topic head on because I believe and I've lived and I've experienced and I've talked to lots of other folks where this has been an issue and many other folks where it is an issue and they don't even know it's an issue. But when hormone levels are off, mm-hmm. it can affect everything. You're like laughing. Because no, I'm not laughing. I'm just I'm just like, I feel this. You feel it. Because, I feel it. Um, listen, it's not a laughable issue. This episode, all about low testosterone, it could relate to other hormones being off as well, including estrogen. But for both men and women, men and women both have and need testosterone. Yes. Obviously, men have more. But when the testosterone level is off for a woman and she has little to none, her um, it can affect her mood. It definitely affects her sex drive. You know, we've heard from you know lots of women who ended up getting on um, bioidentical or some other hormone treatment to boost mm-hmm. her metab her not her metabolism, uh, her testosterone, uh, which might actually boost your metabolism too. I don't know. You talk to your doctor actually, about that. They say sometimes it does. Actually. Well, there you go. See, you go. yeah. So, and then they said, you know, I thought I just had no interest in sex anymore and was just going to live kind of in a sexless marriage, and my husband would have to deal with that. But once I realized my testosterone was way off, and I got that corrected. My mood improved, my energy improved, and my sex drive came back stronger than it had ever been. Mm -hmm. And I'm talking like women of all different ages, you know, like had a a lady write us who was in her 50s. And she said, you know, I got on some supplements to help my testosterone. And she's like, and I can't keep my hands off my husband's now. So husbands everywhere right now are texting their wives saying, listen to this episode. Please listen. Get on this. But for men, when a man's testosterone is off, as mine has been, it affects everything, right? I mean, again, mood, energy, mental, just cloudiness, and then of course, sex drive and sexual performance. And I have a thyroid condition, uh, which I think is directly to blame for the testosterone being off. But the thyroid treatment alone did not bring up the testosterone drastically. So I'm finally... Yeah. Well, we're going to talk about all this, but I'm not going to yes. talk the whole time. So I'm just going to let my lovely bride talk about whatever she wants to talk about because well, she's brilliant and beautiful. And when I said out of the the gate, kind of that I feel this, it's that it's something that we've had to walk fairly recently because I feel like in the midst of your normal health challenges, in the midst of a pandemic, um, your your test. You know, I think all of us have been. At, affected just by the stress of this season of life um, in the world and what's going on, you know, more than more than other years, I guess. And so it's affecting our, our physical health. But I think that with you having this thyroid condition, you're, I think you've had low levels of te- lower levels of testosterone for a while, but yeah. it kind of came to a head. And, um, and I know, uh, and we're, again, you guys, we're like so brutally honest with you. It just came to a head where I felt like, I I was losing you a bit, like losing you in the sense of of who you are, like the very yeah. heart of who you are, and um and I just noticed like here's some signs like because a, a lot of times and we want to talk about this openly because again like Dave said a lot of times people have this and they don't even know like yeah, they don't they don't even know like I was just a grump um that wasn't wasn't myself it's like I could flip the switch and in short for short periods of time still yeah. you know be happy go lucky and all those things. But overall, like I was just kind of in a funk, like a long for a while, term, for a, like yeah, long term, yeah. Um, and I was just convinced that this was just life now, and this is just how it's going to be. But I didn't, I didn't really consider that this was all related to right testosterone being off. And I think a big part of it is there, especially for men, it there's this part, at least for you. I mean, we're just speaking from our particular experience. There was this part of you that did not want to admit, I mean, you're only 43 years old and you're like, there's no way I could have yeah. a testosterone issue. I already have this thyroid thing. And yes, they told you, they, they kind of told you this may be an issue, but they didn't really test you right away. And that's one thing you said you regretted. You wish you had been tested right. kind of years I, I ago. I diagnosed with this in my late 30s, Yeah, probably around 38 maybe. And, right. Um, and I'd been feeling weird like up until For then. a while. So yeah. really... I mean, probably for like a good eight years, I would Mm -hmm. imagine my testosterone has probably been off because I had this thyroid thing that went undiagnosed for a while and I was just off in general. And then I got on the thyroid medication finally and I did start to feel a lot better. And so I just convinced myself like I'm cured, I'm better, I don't need to do anything else. Mm -hmm. Um, And but really the the testosterone didn't didn't come up, which is totally normal. And thyroid's not the only thing that can impact testosterone. Like 
a million different things can impact right. testosterone. So you, th- it's something that you have to ask to be tested for because on most like broad spectrum blood work at your doctor's office, yeah. they won't automatically check for this unless you ask, which doesn't make any sense to me because the more I've learned about it, it impacts so much, mm-hmm. so much of your your health, your mindset, your energy, your sex life. It just, you're, so much is impacted by healthy hormone levels and they're checking for all this other stuff, but you've got to specifically ask them, hey, can you check my testosterone levels? Mm-hmm. Um, and sorry, you- And they will. No, no, sweetie. Um, but it, you know, you finally did, but it took, the, the reason I want to talk about this point of it is- it took you a while to get, it was almost like a pride issue for you. And I'm just speaking really honestly. I hope it's okay. Please. I'm speaking so candidly. But I I wanted to give you the permission. I'm like, I don't see you as any less of a man because you may have a little bit lower testosterone or a lot lower testosterone. But in your mind, it it was a battle with that because you didn't want to see on paper yeah, that it's it was like lower. A, it's a numerical evidence right. that you're not a real man. But and, I know. I mean, and, really, that's how you saw it. Almost. I know, which is totally which is just not true. dumb. But again, when you're our guy, we guys, we can let like foolish pride get in the way sometimes, or at least I can. And I did. I would see this number and where it fell on the chart of where it was supposed to be. And I'm like, um, I'm just not even in the, and Mike, am I? I'm just just not even a man anymore. And it's just really, there's a lot to it. This is a multi-layered thing. And that's why we want to have this conversation, guys, because I'm telling you, like, this has been like an ongoing struggle um, that we're we're coming out of. But like, like, I wasn't at my best for a long time and didn't even know why. Like, I just didn't even know why. And I just thought, well, this is just getting old. This is what getting older is like, or this is... And there are solutions most of the time, even if your issue is not testosterone levels, when we're not at our best, um, there are almost always solutions to help us get back to our best. And that's that's why we have these kind of conversations, because so many people, and I was one of them, they'll settle into a rut where they know they're not at their best. Mm -hmm. But they're just too stubborn to really do anything about it. <laughs> or they're too afraid to find out what the culprit is. Yeah, there you go. And I think deep in your heart of hearts, sweetie, um, now that you know what you know, you can, you know, you have this hope. But I think there was this little part of you that feared that there would not be anything you could do. I yeah. really think there was this little part of you. And um, and as as your spouse, you know, and, and as those of you listening, if you feel like this is something your spouse is going through, this is something they're currently going through, maybe there's like a, a hormonal issue, you have to kind of stand in, you know, in the gap with them and say, listen, no, we're going to get to the bottom of this. I don't see you as any less of the man that you are, the woman that you are, and we're going to get you help. And so Dave did. He went and, and he saw his doctor. He got all the tests done again. And sure enough, they're like, yes, you have, you know, you could benefit from from some testosterone supplements. And so, um, and there's a lot you can choose from. Again, we're not doctors, so this is something you need to talk to a medical professional about. Um, again, it needs to make, make sure, you know, they know what they're doing. I know there are, let me just say this too, there are like some clinics out there that I think just specialize, like for-profit clinics that specialize in testosterone. And I would be a little leery of that because you want to make sure that for any kind of hormone replacement that you're doing, you need to have, you know, be monitored by a doctor. So like with Dave, you know, he's seeing our family doctor every six months, they're going to test him and make sure all those levels are right, because that there are some bad side effects if you don't have it right. And so if you're going to a clinic that's just handing you a supplement or giving you, you know, a shot or something without testing your levels first and where they currently are, I would be very leery of that. Um, so this is something that you just, you know, it's not, it's not, it's not just like a, a simple fix. It's something that you need to make sure you're being, you know, monitored medically. So I just want to make sure we make that very clear. But with Dave, I will tell you, I started noticing, you know, I know he has a thyroid issue, but I started noticing that he had a much shorter fuse. And Dave tends to be a pretty happy guy, but I just noticed that things would get under his skin so much easier. And and it wasn't like he was necessarily flying off the handle at us, but there was just this undercurrent of, of just disdain and kind of a loss of zest for life that is normally there. And um, from what I've read about having low T, which is it's often referred to low testosterone in men, is it, it's it often manifests itself in anger. 
It often manifests itself even in depression, which depression in men often looks like anger, where depression in women often looks like sadness, but really they're both facing depression. And um, and Dave, actually, before he got his testosterone levels tested, did talk to a counselor. I mean, you were taking steps like I something is off. What can I do? And he actually, you know, we we walk the walk here on this podcast and in, in the EXO Marriage Ministry. And so he, you know, he called up Faithful Counseling, one of our sponsors. And um, what what is that website if they want to look up Faithful Counseling? Do you remember? It is getfaithful dot com slash naked marriage. That's right. So he made an appointment with a counselor and actually talked through these things to try to make sure there wasn't some kind of mental block or something. But um and, and and you know, little by little he's trying to take those steps necessary. And I was trying to walk alongside you in that to take the steps necessary to get to what the problem is. And ultimately after some time we found that it low T is part of it. We're not saying it's all of it. Yeah. But it's, it's part it's of it. It's not an excuse. Like you know, I mean, all of us have an excuse to be grumpy, you know, but we have... Like, it's beyond the grumps. But right. It's like... It's like but we yeah. have we have a an imperative that we've got to do everything in our power to be at our best for God, for our spouse, for our families, for ourselves, for our communities. Like, we have to work to be at our best. And I was just not at my best, I'm telling you, for a long time. And Ashley was so patient and so gracious, um, putting up with just... Like, I, again, I wasn't, like, violent or I wasn't just, like, mean all Mm-mm. the time or anything like that. Like, I was still basically myself, but just not the best version just of myself. Just begrudgingly. Yeah, no, I was just kind of going through the motion. <laughs> no, and I, just not yourself. I just, mean, we know our spouse. Yeah, like, you just want yourself. Yeah. I, and I could feel it, too. And then I felt this helplessness of, like, I don't know how to break out of this funk. I'm in this negative place, and I really don't know how to break out of it. And... Because I was doing everything I knew to do, even when I felt I thought that like okay, I'd had signs that it was testosterone related, I was leery to get on an actual prescription for a long time, and so I would take like over the counter supplements. Like you can just go on Amazon and Google testosterone, and a bunch of stuff will pop up. None of it is actual testosterone because you have to get a prescription for that. Sure. But but they have a lot of natural supplements that are supposed to boost things or boost your, you know, your sexual energy or your strength or whatever else. And so like I took different stuff and I don't know if it was placebo or if it actually was helping, but I, you know, I felt a little better and I thought, and I was taking vitamins and I was, I was trying to watch my diet. I was trying to exercise more. I, you know, I was talking to a counselor. So I was doing all these things that I knew how to do, but it was like, I just couldn't get to where I felt really good. I describe myself as feeling like a cell phone battery that just would not hold a charge. Mm -hmm. Like I'm doing everything I know how to do to plug in this phone and keep it on a charger, but it seems like it gets in red and gets on empty like in no time. And that's how my body and my mind and my soul felt um, for a long time. And some of it is that we are in a busy season of life. You know, some of it is that I'm not 20 years old anymore and I can't, you know, stay up all night and feel okay the next day. Like I but when I was doing everything I, I knew how to do, going to bed early, um, all those things, which are important and things that we should all try to do just to make sure we're getting rest and adequate exercise and a relatively good diet and all that stuff. But if it's still like I'm just not at 100 mm-hmm. percent, explore, explore why not. And I'm telling you, a lot of the time you're going to find it's your hormones are off and testosterone is the secret ingredient. And you know, even there was a time Ashley got on what's called right. bioidentical pellets, which is like a pellet of testosterone that that they 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 put in you. Um, like they they cut a little. I mean, it cut sounds a little weird. Slit and they put this in, and yeah, it sounds in your really hip. weird. But I'm telling you, she was the most like energetic. Um, couldn't keep her hands off me. Like I was ready to just buy stock in this company. You're like and get bio ID. Supply. Where do I sign up? Yes. But that's something for both men and women. You could. <laughs> really benefit from. Now, as a quick side note, um, again, talk to a doctor. We're not we're not just trying to give blanket advice, say, hey, everybody get on testosterone, because there are dangers if it gets mm-hmm. too high, you can get too aggressive. There's side effects. For some some people that have had certain kinds of cancers, um, mm-hmm. messing with your hormone levels, uh, testosterone could could spark that like, you know, like a breast cancer returning, right, exactly. if you've had breast cancer, that sort of thing. You really have to talk to doctors about this. And it's not a one size fits all. But for me and for countless others, getting this addressed, getting this right fixed, is, 
it makes it makes a big difference. It really does. And I want to say this too, um, as always too, Dave, throughout this whole process, you know, uh, sometimes it is like a, a spiritual thing where maybe maybe there's something that's unconfessed in your life or like some kind of hidden sin or um, or even something that's not sin, just something you haven't dealt with, like some shame or a stronghold in your life. Um, that was something that, you know, you've you've always been in the Word, praying through it. And I, wanna, I just want to say that is something that needs to be explored too. I mean, we're oh, not yeah. just saying like, oh, you know, it's probably your hormones. Like we're not saying that. I mean, yeah. a lot of times there's other things. You can listen to many podcast episodes on here where we talk about this at length. But um, even throughout this time, I just remember you would tell me, you know, you would read your Bible every day as you always do. And you would pray and we would pray together like we always do. And it just, I feel like what God was telling us is like, you need to get checked out. You know, I think sometimes we count doctors out, but it's like, they are there. God gave us doctors to help us with these things. People who know our bodies and how they work, and um, and then and there are solutions that can help you know to boost hormones and and to tweak things to make you feel your best. And so, um, but definitely make sure you're doing your part and you're reading your Bible and you're praying. Um, I want to say this as far as my journey with low T. So I I'm I'm fine right now, but like years ago. The symptoms that kind of I noticed in myself is I was just run down. Now, this was probably when we had, you know, we had our four boys and the youngest was still a baby. And then we had a toddler and then um, some like elementary schoolers and, you know, or middle school somewhere in there. And I... Again, it might have been season of life, but I just felt so tired. And I felt like no matter how much sleep I was getting, it just wasn't enough. And I've heard that a lot of women who have a little bit lower testosterone than they need, that's usually the case. And so I had a, a pastor, wife, friend of mine, like we were at a conference, I remember, and I was talking about this. We were speaking at their marriage conference in Athens, Georgia. And I remember um, the pastor and his wife were sitting down talking to us and, um, and I don't, I think it was just from the Lord. Like she was, she kind of asked me, she's like, are you tired? And, and she doesn't really, she didn't really know me at the time. And I was like, I am exhausted. Like I literally am like, I'm exhausted. I, life is so good. I, I'm not complaining, but I just am exhausted. And she was like, well, have you ever had your levels checked? And I, at the time was probably in my thirties. And I just thought, well, that's for old people. I mean, that's literally what I thought. Like, I'm not, I'm like 30, whatever, you know, why would I need to get, my hormone levels checked. I've just had some children. I mean, clearly they're fine. Like I've been to my OB. I'm sure my levels are fine. They would have told me yeah. something. You, you say your but, 30s like it was a long time ago. Well, I'm 40 now, yeah, but I'm so saying like- That was back, way back in way my back 30s. Way back in my Three 30s. Hey, <laughs> you guys, some days it feels like that. It does. Hold on to your youth. But anyway, um, I I just remember you know her, her really pressing me on it. And this woman is probably a decade to 15 years ahead of me. And, um, and then she shared her story with me. She said, you know, I was at this point in my life and I was just tired all the time. And then she did say, she said, and my sex drive was really low at this moment in time. Like we were so busy with just raising kids. And I mean, I felt like our sex life was fine, but honestly it was like, life was so crazy. I don't know if that was something that I was concerned about at the time. But she was like, I was concerned. Yeah, <laughs> no, no, it wasn't like a concerning. No, thing no, we're not concerned. Time. Like it, we it, felt like it was fine. But I didn't know what I was missing. Is what it, yeah. this is the point I'm going to make. So like, you know. Anyway, she encouraged me. She said, you know what, just just have them check it out. It may be nothing, but there's there's some things they can do. So I found a doctor in my town who did these kind of tests because again, even if you go to your OB regularly, and like even if like you just had a baby and they're testing those hormones or or maybe some different levels, they don't necessarily test for what they're looking for testosterone wise. Yeah. And so I went to a clinic um with um a doctor that, you know, this is she does a wide spectrum test of testosterone levels. And sure enough, she's like, Yeah, you're pretty low. Like, no wonder you're feeling exhausted. And and she's like, you're not the lowest I've seen, you know, because again, I was only like in my thirties, but still she was like, you know, I can, um, you know, there's, there's some supplements you can take and, um, I, I can do this bio ID pellet with you. And so, um, you can look it up. You guys are like pellet. What is this? But they basically, they shoot it in your hip and it's, it's considered bioidentical in the sense that it's a more natural, um, version of hormone replacement. And nobody is sponsoring this podcast on this. We don't get any kickbacks from this. I just want to say that, but it's just something that's worked for me and for many people. Um, and again, you just need to do your research, but I was, I did my research and I was like, you know, I'm going to give it a try. And I did. And let me tell you, it takes a little bit to kick in, but I had a lot of energy. Oh, she had some energy. I mean, it was, it was like, it was kind of crazy. It was amazing. No, you're always amazing with or without pellets. <laughs> Right. No, but it was good. It was a good, um, I don't know. It, it was a nice natural way to kind of 
make me feel better. And it did, it helped me to lose a little bit of weight because um, you can actually build more muscle too. When women have a little bit more testosterone, you can, you burn more fat and build more muscle. Yeah. And, um, but again, I want to say this, you have to be very careful and make sure again, you're monitored by a doctor. I had a friend that um, she got bioidentical um, hormones, but it ended up breaking her out terribly. Like she had a very bad adverse reaction to it. And so what, 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 turned out to be is that she was having too high a levels um, of testosterone in her pellet and they had to get it adjusted so that she wasn't breaking out so much. But other than breaking out, she loved, you know, how it made her feel. And her husband was very pleased too with the results of her rise in her libido. And so again, you just have to make sure it's kind of a monitor and adjusting experience, but it did make a difference, you know, in them because she was having those fatigue issues. And for me, um, I'm on a sub, a, a prescribed medication called Androgel, uh, which is just like a daily little gel that you you rub on your skin and it seeps into your skin and it's, you know, it's testosterone. Um, I will tell you though that um, even though it was prescribed by a doctor, my insurance company didn't pay for it. Um, so they wouldn't cover it. They wouldn't cover it, which was frustrating. Which was weird. We because why, it's but... working and I feel <laughs> way better. And I'm like, hey, insurance, you don't want me to feel better, but it's all right. I'm not bitter. No, so um, <laughs> they have coupons. So, but you, I went online because like the over the counter <laughs> price was like super high, but there's uh, there was coupons. I think it was through uh, a free online service called Good RX. Yeah, and the coupon like made it like eighty like percent cheaper, way cheaper, su substantially lower. Still, it's still an investment, I'll say. But but it is worth it. it I'm feeling better, and so guys, bottom line, what, just do what's going to help you feel your best, be your best, explore options. And um, and keep going. And testosterone is something that you know people are. There's still a lot of research out on it. Here, one quick little interesting tidbit before we dive into today's question: um, testosterone levels as a whole are drastically declining in people. Researchers say that a hundred years ago, men's normal testosterone levels were literally double, double what they are now, like double. So like. The average they believe 100 years ago was a, a testosterone level around like a thousand, and um and right now like the normal like healthy range is somewhere between like four and six hundred. I was in the low two hundreds, uh, even a generation ago. Like those guys' testosterone levels were on average higher than ours. So all you old guys listening that always believed you were more of a man than these young punks, you were right. You're still <laughs> listening right now. Like I knew it, I knew it. Daggone it, all you dirty Harrys out there um <laughs> that has nothing really to do with what we're talking about other than that's I, clint eastwood right I, I, yeah some people won't know your reference i'm just exactly. trying to give well, frame of reference you gotta respect the classics yeah. so um <laughs> i say all that to say like there's a lot happening just in our world i and i don't they don't know if it's from the hormones in the chicken we eat or if milk it's we drink lifestyle induced stress but testosterone levels are dropping it's such a drastic and significant rate that medical researchers, um, they're scratching their heads and they're they're like, is this a crisis? Is this like we don't know what's going on? But what they do know is that when we get up into that healthy range, which again for men is usually like between, it's a broad range, but the sweet spot seems to be between like four and six hundred. I was nowhere close to that. Um, women, I don't know what it is. I can't you remember. Can Google it. Yeah. But finding yourself in that sweet spot uh, is going to help you just overall. And if you're not there, if you're way below that, don't feel bad. Like I felt bad. I'm like, oh my gosh, I guess this means I'm not a man anymore. No, it just means I need some medicine, you know? And all of a sudden I, you feel better. Just do what's in your power to do to feel at your best and be at your best, whether it has to do with testosterone or some other factor. Maybe there's just things in your life have nothing to do with testosterone. You just know like, hey, to be at my best, I need to drink less or maybe not at all, or to be at my best, I need to adjust my diet, or I need to sleep more, mm -hmm. or I need to pull away from some like toxic things I'm putting in my mind and spend more time in God's Word. Like, Just be really honest about what would it look like for me to remove the unhealthy stuff and to just be much more mindful and intentional about what I'm putting into my mind and my body so I can be at my best for God, for my spouse, for my family, and you'll be glad that you did. All right, it's time for today's Q&A. Thanks for those who send in questions at nakedmarriagepodcast.com. And this one is kind of uh, uh, related to what we've been talking about today. That's it right. says, my spouse has a very low sex drive, and I can empathize with that. The bigger problem for me is that my wife just doesn't find sex fun. Mm. 
how do I help my spouse see sex as something fun that we get to do, not something that's just an obligation or a chore? Mm. Great question. You know, we've got a a book that I'd recommend real quick. We do. Because Mm, there is a book, coincidentally, that I think would just be the great a great resource with conversation guides to help you and your spouse right. talk through this. And the book's called The Counterfeit Climax. We've talked about it a lot because we're so excited about this yeah. book. But get the book. Talk about that. That's right. TheCounterfeitClimax.com or wherever books are sold. Um, get on Amazon. Uh, you know, guys, I totally, I can relate to this. I think that it depends on your phase of life. And um, we have whole episodes on this if you want to get kind of into more detail. But... Um, the short of it is, I would really, you know, because it says that she doesn't find sex fun and that it's kind of an obligation or a chore. It sounds like she may feel a little bit overwhelmed right now. And Dave and I have had this conversation before, especially in the midst of having young children, lots of stuff on the plate. For women, for us to enjoy sex, it's very different from men. Like sex is is stress relief for men. But for women, if there's everything else everything else to do, it's really hard for her to just stop what she's doing and enjoy sex. Yeah, It's it just our minds work very differently. And, and I'm sure there's some women out there where maybe that's the opposite. But for the majority of women, you know, that's kind of how we are. We need to kind of have stuff off of our plate in order for our minds to be in the space for romance. And I mean, I've, I've described this to you before because there's been times throughout our marriage where I've been like, I really want to enjoy this and I don't want to see it as a chore. But before I can get there, I really just either I need to kind of get myself in a better mental space and not look at the laundry pile right now, or I need to just take care of the laundry and then, you know, I'm going to be golden. Like I can, I can actually enjoy this right now. And I or know guys, you can dive in and start dive into the laundry. Exactly. La- even la- better, laundry. like way That's better. That's play right there. Exactly. Yeah, definitely. And we, you guys have heard us joke about this, but chore play. Okay. Chore play is a real thing. <laughs> Pitch in, in those chores, guys, there is nothing sexier than you changing a diaper, running a bath for your wife, putting away the towels, um, just doing, you know, just helping. Cause it doesn't, I mean, let me, I could go off on a soapbox, but chores don't need to all fall on one person anyway. In fact, I would even say they don't even need to fall on just two people. They should fall on the whole family. Like you are a family. Families need to pitch in on chores. And um, I think sometimes, and I'm not saying, I don't know the dynamic of this couple. It it could be that he is helping out. Like it could be that he, he really is kind of doing his part to, to kind of free up the space for her and still she's seeing it as an obligation or a chore. And that's where the counterfeit climax really comes in. There might be some lies that she's been believing that, that maybe sex, you know, there's sadly a lot of women were raised to believe that sex is really something that only the man enjoys, but that's so far from the truth. And so a lot of women have kind of put it in their mind. Well, this is just me fulfilling my marital duty. I'm not going to probably no. ever enjoy it. But that's really a lie, you know? I mean, gosh, look to the book Song of Solomon. You see both the male and the female just enjoying sex and seeing it as a beautiful gift that it is. And so um, I would really just talk to her about it and say, listen, what can I do to make this a better experience for you? What can I do? And when you go to your wife and you're just, you know, using those I statements like, listen, I, I just want to... I want this to be a pleasurable experience for you. And I don't want, I don't want to feel like I'm I'm another thing on the list. And I know you don't want that either. So what can I do to make this more enjoyable enjoyable for you? And then kind of see where the conversation goes from there. So good. You know, one one little tidbit that I learned from Gary Thomas when he was on here, talking about men and women, oh, yes, sex is for yes. both of you. The female orgasm lasts twice as long as the male orgasm. So that it's just more proof that, like, ladies, God wants you to wants enjoy to sex. Experience it. Yeah. In fact, he gave you double the pleasure. Totally random fact. Apparently, and I read this somewhere, I'm a fount of trivial, useless knowledge. <laughs> a pig's orgasm <laughs> what? can last up to 20 minutes. Wow. So, you know, that's, you Google that. So, that's kind of disturbing. Well, you like... know, pigs, they have <laughs> not a glamorous life, but apparently God bless them I in just, that way. I just don't want to ever, like, farm life. Some of you farm, people who grew up on a farm, write us and let us know. Uh, let us know. But if you're out there with a stopwatch watching the pigs have sex, no, don't you probably do that. have other issues. But I was just going to say, everybody I know but, who's grown up on a farm, they usually know this stuff. They okay. know this stuff. So, yeah. Again, we're Sorry, off on a tangent. That's a weird, we started a weird with testosterone. Image. We ended with pig pigs, orgasm. Pig orgasm. Timing. But, yeah. you know, you never know what you're going to get on the Naked Marriage podcast. <laughs> It's going to be. It's a, going to be. It's going to awkward. It's, <laughs> <laughs> it's our, 
our spinoff, The Awkward Marriage with The, with awkward, the awkward Marriage. <laughs> wow. Oh, my goodness. Well, guys, thank you all so much for tuning in. And we just hope that your week is not as awkward as this conversation. <laughs> and we love you guys. Bye-bye. Love you guys. See you next time. <laughs>